Welcome back to Twitch Plays D and D. Yes. Woo! The only D and D show where you get to vote to make one of the characters do funny things, like asking his friends to go in a stinky crypt filled with gore. I'm your dungeon master, Sobi, and we are live with episode four of Twitch Plays D and D: Curse of Strahd. Joining us today, we have, as always, Alex playing as Delphini, the beefy barbarian. Hell yeah! Welcome back, guys. Victor playing as Clement, the culinary cleric. Well, that's hard to say. <laughs> Maki playing as Cheek, the dainty druid. Hello. And Jordan playing as Roland, the somatic sorcerer, the character that you get to control. If this is your first time joining us, then you're going to want to sit down for this. And if you're already sitting, I recommend first standing up and then sitting down to get a similar effect. <laughs> Throughout the session, you'll see polls on screen asking you about how you'd like Roland, our sorcerer, to react to certain situations. Type in your favorite option and we'll handle the rest from there. Which brings us to our opening, opening poll. poll. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What do you want the cultists to chant? Baba Ganoush? Something about ancient land? Or touch the fish. Oh my God. You can vote right now in chat by typing in the number that you guys want. And oh boy, there's already an overwhelming One response. Might have, been, have, might have been a given. And it looks like touch the fish is taking the lead here. <laughs> Indeed. And with that, let's play some D and D. Very Last nice. time, still searching for the monster that Thorn spoke of, you explored the dark dungeons and crypts beneath the creepy house. There you found and attacked Lady Durst, the mother of the household, who had completely succumbed to madness. With poisonous spores choking the air, Clement grappled Lady Durst while Delphine smashed her legs and Roland dealt the killing blow with his staff ripping Lady Durst's tongue clean out of her head and heroically whipping it like Indiana Jones. You then found the family crypt where you were reunited with Squiggles, the ghostly nursemaid, and learned more about her tragic backstory. You placed the remains of the children in their respective crypts and cleverly decided to lay Squiggles to rest in Lady Durst's tomb. You saved them from the curse but they ask that you please help do the same for their baby brother, Walter. You continue down the dark, winding dungeon, finding an ominous statue of a gaunt, sinister-looking man with a magical orb and an assortment of other useful items. The tunnel ended in a large oak door with chanting coming from the other side. Roland and Cheek, both of you, using a coordinated thunder wave attack, exploded the door killing a cultist and exposing a large room with stone walls and several stone balconies from which dozens of dark robed figures stand. Murky waters cover most of the floor and there's a large stone altar in the center of the room with none other than a smelly fish on it. The chanting immediately stopped as a large cultist with glowing red eyes steps forward past the crowd and calls out, what is the meaning of this? This is outrageous. And he's interrupted as you see another cultist place their hand on this large brooding figure. And he says, wait, wait, this is good experience, Drexor. Let the intern handle this one. You really have to think about who'll be doing this after you're gone one day. Very well. Steve, where are you? And Steve. a shorter cultist pushes his wave forward through through this just crowd of black robes. And he steps forward with his arms crossed. Gosh, Dad, I told you I didn't want to do this, but whatever. Okay. First question, guys. Who are you? Uh, we're here to deliver a message from, from Lady Drexel, or Durst. Oh, Lady Durst sent you? Is that right? Yeah, and yeah. Delphine, give yeah. me a deception check. Yeah, actually, I think she was sending a, a few people over here for the uh, ritual. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you guys had already started, but uh, she did send us. Yeah, remember. that's us. Also, um, you possibly have any anything to drink or something just to keep us entertained, you know? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Lady Durst sent you in. Um, uh, all right. Uh, 
That's awesome, man. You're, you're here just in time for the sacrifice. You there, hungry guy. There's a crate in the corner over there. We got some, uh, some bread. Don't, don't eat the moldy one, though. <laughs> Yum. Do you have the living sacrifice that you need? Well, no, that's actually why she sent us, is that she wanted you guys, since you're more experienced with all this, to actually go and, go and get one. Well, uh, that's not really how this usually works. Usually the, uh, the people who enter about right now bring in, uh, the sacrifice. Are you, you guys sure you don't have something? I can be sacrificed. Uh, no, Cheek, please. Uh, cheek. Don't, don't, don't do that. Yeah, I like um, the sound of that. That's cool. Cheek. No, no, Steve, Steve, uh, I, I apologize. We're, we're still relatively new to this. Um, no, no, Roland, Roland, it's okay. Just just give this a moment. Let's, let's see where this goes. If things go horribly, then sure, we'll sacrifice you. Okay. And as this happens, you hear as a huge explosion shakes the entire room. A large part of the wall on your right crumbles apart, destroying some of the balcony as large stone blocks crush a handful of uh, cultists that were on the, on the balcony that has now collapsed. From the dust emerges a man with gleaming blonde hair and golden armor standing heroically with his hands on his hips. His hair elegantly blows back, and he says, Ha ha, fear not, peasants, for it is I, Rusty Shackleford III, come to oh. save <laughs> you all. My God. So he turns to all four of you now and says, Well, aren't you in need of saving? And I go, damn it, Rusty, we had this under control. There's a sacrifice, I mean, come on. Yes, there, there he is. He's, he's virgin sacrifice. Yes, Steve and 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 uh, and Drexel. Look, look, there he is. Yes, Rusty Shackleford will be your sacrifice. See, it came. We said that we would bring it. It just, it just came here. Uh, How convenient. So, um, yeah, I guess that checks out. Can you get that guy and put him on the altar? And and Rusty looks quickly at your group and says, "What peasants? You four peasants there? You telling me that you're working with this?" Cold? Ha ha! Calling us peasants, eh? Peasants? Who are you calling a peasant? Yeah, no, look, uh, Rusty, Rusty, I, I take great offense at this. Do you know who I am? And at this point, Roland, your pocket actually begins to vibrate as you hear. Oh, Roland, what do you think? Should we sacrifice something, or, or should we just tell them to f off? Uh, oh, that, that that guy walked in. Maybe we could trick him or something. That could be fun. What do you think, Roland? Rusty, Rusty, where have you been? I mean, you know, it's been, it's been, what, how, how long has it been since I've seen you before? You know this guy? Uh, you know, I, he, he looks familiar. I've heard the name before. Look, where, where have you been? And how did you get in here? How do you bust through a wall when we're below the ground? Where did you come from? The town over mentioned strange things happening at this house, so I used my powers to detect evil, and it led me here. <laughs> so, of course, using my homemade explosives, I blew into the place for a surprise attack. <laughs> Well, uh, with that, uh, I guess a surprise attack is exactly uh, what, what the doctor called for. Look, Drexel, Steve, I appreciate your hospitality. I appreciate you working with us here. But look, uh, we we don't have a sacrifice. I'm, I'm sorry, Delphini. I'm going to blow your cover here. We don't have a sacrifice. We have nothing for you. If you really want to put somebody on the altar, you can go back there. There's a big dead woman with a big long tongue. Uh, you might have to pick up a couple of pieces of her. But, you know, yeah. we're we're not providing a sacrifice right now. Just, just out of curiosity, what happens <laughs> if we don't have a sacrifice? I mean, is that so important? If you don't have a sacrifice we'll have to just kill you all as the that large figure steps forward and pushes steve out of the way as you hear gosh dad i had this one handled <laughs> just quick uh where are those crates of bread that you mentioned <laughs> yeah over in the corner man dude all you talk about is food <laughs> and uh, rusty actually looks at you roland Peasant, you are saying that you've seen me before. Perhaps it was my beautiful hair at that last time I was in the potion shop nearby. And he starts squinting at you, and he looks forward. Actually, are you the potion seller? Uh, I've been known by many names, but uh, the potion seller, unfortunately, is not one of them. That would be uh, me. Ah, yeah, he small, looks but... at Cheek and says, Ah, potion seller, 
I need your strongest potion, for I'm about to go into battle right now against this cult. <laughs> Give me your strongest potion. Uh, so I would like to slow to him. Uh, and I still have my staff in hand with Shalele already prepared because I had it before. And I would just like to crack him over the head because I don't like Rusty Shackleford. I think he's a, a charlatan and I've met him before and I don't like him because all he ever does is call us peasant. Is this some sort of peasant joke that I'm too rich to understand? Now in magical powers conjure as one day we'll have cool effects for someone else to do this or something. <laughs> The fish! The fish is there! I love <gasps> the it! Fish. <laughs> Sacrifice the fish! Oh, oh my god! Please, I do not walk to you. Walk to me and give me that potion. I'm just going to casually walk over with a, a smile on my face that seems very fake. <laughs> but <laughs> deep down it hurts. And um, I'm going to say, Oh, Rusty, it has been such a long time. You don't even remember my name except for Potion Seller. You couldn't even remember that I'm not human or male. What potion would you like, Rusty? I said before I would like your strongest potion for I am about to go into battle against this cult. And as he's talking, uh, I raise my, my staff and just crack him over the head. Give me a, a hit roll for that. You swing your staff, enhanced with your shillelagh magic, as uh, as he as you swing it, and it just goes ding right on his golden chest plate medal, and says, "Ah, I see. So I will just have to defeat all of you then." And he jumps down into the water, climbs the nearest staircase up to the altar, and says, "Enough with this fish!" And he gives it a little kick and says, I have interrupted your ritual. And as he does this, the cultists that are remaining on the balconies begin to chant, Dalu Anar Vash Nore. Dalu Anar Vash Nore. As you hear them cut off with Steve. Uh, sorry guys, I don't know this one. Can we switch to the, to the other chant this time? And you hear this mumbling amongst all the cultists, as then you now hear them in unison chanting, touch the fish, touch the <laughs> fish. A gathering indeed of bones, flesh, and body parts comes together and rises out of the water as a giant moving heap of gore. Oh, yeah. oh my to. God. So don't touch the fish, actually. But don't yeah. touch well, the we fish. didn't touch the fish. <laughs> Please don't touch the fish. And we can oh, that's roll. gross. Initiative. Yo, who Fat got that net 20? Fat 20! Nope. Fat Wait. 20, our first 20. Can we see some emotes in the chat? Let's see some emotes. Fat 20. Roland, we like are a party. We have switched over in case you wanted to follow along with the music into our battle scene. Delphini, you have barged into this room. You've been in the front from the beginning. You've surveyed the scene and you're ready to act. Okay, cool. In that case, I will not feel bad when I get my hammer and whack it. Do it, Delvini. Ooh, Ooh you These die are feeling it today. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. You swing and you smack that arm. You're hitting like right where the arm is co is kind of connecting out of this disgusting heap of flesh. And as you do, uh, it drops the fish onto the ground. Um, and you do see a, a part of this arm that just has this large gash in it now. It hasn't completely severed off, um, but all oh, those arms are looking mangled at this point. And that's the one limb sticking out of this disgusting creature. And Clement. You've seen Delphini charge up and give this monster a huge smack. And as it, as you ready yourself to move, Clement, you in particular hear the muffled sounds of an infant crying, which appears to be coming from the monster. Ooh. Don't my case. I'll say, just be careful. I think, I think there's a baby in there somewhere. And you um, think there's a baby in that? Yeah, just be careful hitting it. Um, and um, uh, just for reference sake, in which corner is the crate that the person that's if you went, that <laughs> it, It's uh, unfortunately not identified on the map. Okay, I'll get closer. 
to the uh, the crate. Could I use a bonus action to grab a bread? Yes, you can. <laughs> and you you All easily right. reach in there and you find one that doesn't have much mold on it. Actually, it looks quite. You, right. know, you you think it looks good? I'll take a, a bite out of it and um, I'll look towards the creature and I'll say Zvito Plamia and I'll cast Sacred Flame at it with just my mouth. Zvito Plamia. Ha ha! And he fails <laughs> miserably from this as this uh, this reddish flame that you have have used in the past just beams up in a circle around this creature. It beams up and you hear this horrid screech. With that, the creature lunges forward and goes to uh, smack Delphini, who just is her, made direct contact with, with this hammer here. And it l- lurches out with this just heaping weird, like almost forming a limb as just part of its fleshy body l- lurches forward and smacks you, but its movement is almost a little too sluggish as you dodge nimbly out of the way. And at right. this moment, um, and at this moment, you hear ah, the voices speaking again. And Roland, they seep into your mind and ask you, well, well, it seems like we found ourselves in a tight spot here. What do you recommend? Okay, so I cast Mage Hand, and uh, with the Mage Hand, I pick up the fish, and I use it to throw the fish up to the balcony at, uh, is it is it Drexel? Um, yeah, the Drexel. largest cultist, the, the one with the glowing yes. red eyes. Yes, the, the, one that, the one that seems to be leading this. So um, I, I use this to, to pick it up at a diagonal. So it's right there, so it's very close, and it just takes it and throws it directly at Drexel. Give me a dexterity check as for a throw, but let's roll that with advantage because it's actually not your strength that's throwing it, it's your ability to conjure this magic, and I would say you're skilled at doing that. Excellent. And you pick up this fish, and as you as your mage hand picks it up, you start to see the steam release off of it as it almost seems to burn your your ethereal mage hand. And you toss that up at the balcony as you immediately hear screams from the cultist. Ah! Yes! And I love the, it. The fish lands square and hits Drexor. And cheek. You see this fish fly through the air as the cultists scream wildly, and you find yourself ready to take action. Okay, well, because my party is handling everything so well, I want to search all of these dead things around because there's so much dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I search this dead body, is that a action or a bonus action? Uh, okay. Rather, actually, you know what? I'm going to let you guys search that corpse as a bo- bonus action. If you wanted to search that full pile and do it yeah. efficiently, that would take a full action. <gasps> okay, I will do. I will check the, this dead cultist and search the body. You you look on this cultist and you give him a pat down. You find an uh, assortment of just kind of just random items like weird trinkets uh, or, you know, weird cultist trinkets, like little shrunken head. Um, Ooh, but one I, thing I that- I like the shrunken head. Yeah, you can, <laughs> you've got that little shrunken head. It's like, it would make a nice little keychain, you know? And you do find um, a green vial on him and oh, you can yeah. see it in there and it, it, is, it looks like it's bubbling. Um, from your druidic past, I would say um, that you, you'd you be pretty clear that just the look of this looks like some form of acid. That, I will take that and, and put it in my, my shoulder pouch so that I can access it easily. Oh, actually, can I toss it? You can drink in- it indeed. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I toss it to Delphine so that she can like throw yeah. it at yeah, you totally too. can, and actually, I was just thinking about this beforehand. I will allow you guys to throw things, and you could either treat that as um, a bonus action or part of your movement if it's a small enough thing. So, like, if you want to just throw a little potion, totally fine yeah. with that. So, as I as I'm going to the pile of bodies, I want to like underhand toss, and I'll say, Delphini, I found something very useful. It's acid. Acid. 
Yes. All right, do I have to roll like a dex to catch that? And so yeah. because you guys are corner to corner right now, I'm gonna say it's easy enough to do. If you want it, if anyone here wanted to throw it further than that, I would have you guys do a dex. Um, okay. I'd, I'll, I'll think about if it's a, if, if it's a dexterity throw mm. or, if, or if it's a catch. Maybe it'll even be both. Oh, okay. 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 So I can just toss to her. And then I'm going to take my actual action and I'm going to search this pile of bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I feel right at home. Great. So you used your bonus and your... So what was your movement speed? So you know what? Let's... Yeah, let's... Let's make it work. You get into that that pile there, and I am gonna actually. Can you roll a d20 for me, please? Yes. An eight. So you look through this, and you're pulling, um, like what looks like animal rib cages out. There's even like a severed arm here and there. Uh, you it does look like they've done some disgusting sacrifices and just thrown all the piles of. of gore this way and you're sorting through um you you do this you know you you have no problem with this you fell into that disgusting crypt last time and kind of shrugged it off so you're just kind of almost merrily picking through this pile of gore and you find a damp scroll um you're able to immediately read this one actually it's a, a damp scroll of of false life and you can use necromantic power to grant someone 1d6 plus four temporary hit points for a minute. Oh my god. Ooh. And other mm. than that, you don't find anything else. Okay, so what what was it? A scroll of... False, False light. light, it's called. So I will end my turn. I, I'm going to just sit in this pile of bodies and pour myself over this scroll so I can decide what to do with it. You guys <laughs> see Cheek go over there and like, it looks like she's playing around in all this disgusting gore. And you just see her sit down and start reading the scroll in the middle of battle. <laughs> and Delphine, <laughs> it's back to you. Um, and, Delphine yeah. looks around at one of her party members, which is very busy eating bread, and the other party <laughs> member, who is sitting in a pile of dead bodies, just kind of like, what the hell, guys? <laughs> and I guess just goes to like toss this acid at the monster. So give me, uh, give me a dex. Rogue, because you're just tossing at him, and roll with advantage. You're right up, to, right up. Oh, with advantage. Not even. Um, yet. Actually, let's see, if it's a, let's see if it's in that tw a fat twenty. Well, who knows? Ooh, another <laughs> one. We're gonna push our luck. Oh, uh, <laughs> all right. So, youth wielding Ooh. um this this small vial, this thin vial. You just toss it at this monster as it shatters right on it, and you see this green bubbling liquid now on its skin as it goes and it pierces through this heaping flesh. Um, nothing regrows there as it just now has this hole sunk into part of it. And you can see inside of it a little more and you see just this sinuous ligaments all keep, like binding this disgusting creature together um, and just it, just disgusting almost internal kind of guts and intestines in this weird creature here. <laughs> and that was just uh, a bonus. Oh, and, um, Cheek looks up from the scroll and she goes, See, Delphini, I told you it was very useful. And goes back yeah. to her. <laughs> <laughs> and Thanks, Delphini, Cheek. could you roll a 1d8 for me, please? At this point, you are close enough to it. You can also just barely hear this faint infant crying. And it does, with the location you're at, you, it sounds like it's coming from inside this monster. Disgusting. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually going to switch the Warhammer to one-handed, and I'm going to take out my hand axe and start chopping in more of an Ooh. effort to see inside. All right, well, we'll take it. <laughs> All right. And you pull out this small hatchet, and you just wail on him with your, with your one arm, even with a hefty blow, and you slice into this, and you hit one of the eyes, and you just see it split open as pus and blood just squirt out of it and um you do slice into it and you do once again kind of just see the ligaments and the internal disgusting flesh in this monster uh not as deep as that acid kind of sucked into and sucked into it but you do have, you've kind of exposed a little part of it there 
Three. Yeah, and you I just slice that open and make a nice gash right in there. All right, so as I'm stuffing my, the bread in my mouth, um, I'll, um, I'll say, Delfini, um, don't worry, I got your back. And uh, I will uh, say, Shivili, and I will cast a uh, shield of faith on Delfini. And you see the scars on, on uh, Clement's hand. He's holding the bread and um, the scars just flare up and the bread is starting to get warm. All around Delfini, there's this um, quick flicker of uh, a red light. Yeah, so you see this almost semi-transparent glow covering around you as it vroom, vroom, yeah, flickers into existence. You get a plus two bonus to your AC. Or, and uh, so, so playing that out, Clement is still almost head deep cool. into this box of bread as he, <laughs> he just casually turns around and flicks his hand as this, yeah. And so this heaping flesh um, reels back in pain from Delphine's acid and hatchet swing. And what it's going to do is it's going to start to slime over this way and it's actually going to leech and so what we have over here is just it's kind of a raised uh walkway over here um about five feet up so you'd have to climb over this but it's such a large heaping mass that it's able to just as it slumps over with a hand and he's gonna reach for ooh, and it so this heaping mound of a, of a limb-like flesh that has some mouths and tongues sticking out of it lashes out and s slams onto you and oh ooh, and Ouch. it deals 13 damage to you ooh. uh what we're gonna do right now is a grapple check so both of us are gonna roll opposing strength checks and it i firmly attaches onto you as it um, has just fully encompassed your your body and, you, and you're now um, incapacitated in the arm like substance of this creature. I am just absorbed into this creature? Uh, not yet. It looks like it's it's kind of moved forward almost with it's moved out of it like an arm and it's went, it's gone around like your waist. And that is so Roland at this moment you start hearing Oh no, this is not looking good. What do you think that we should do next? I saw some cool pillars or something, but I think we're in a bind here. I, I grasp at my head and uh, put my put my other hand down at my waist where it presumably is uh, wrapped around. Yes, why don't you ask the cultists for the weakness of this thing? They seem stupid. <laughs> so Steve is supposedly right above me right yeah yeah okay and you can kind of um, lean your head out and still see the figures leaning over the balcony okay so with the with the force of this grappled arm around me which kind of pulls me up against the railing that i'm against behind you know kind of brought back up above so that i'm looking straight above and with that, uh, I cast my spell that I didn't realize that I had until today. Uh, charm, I, I cast Charm Person on Steve. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, and, but, yeah. Yeah. Does he need to make a, a wisdom save? Or? So it is a wisdom saving throw. Dear Lord. Ooh. Come on. Ooh. So you Ooh. cast this. <clears throat> charm oh, no. person as this is a bit of a stealthy spell not even you don't even see magical energies as, you, as steve oh. just locks eyes with you and you see him kind of like gazing down at you uh, you start to make out just the the shadow of his face behind the this dark hood uh, and you see him shake his head as he becomes once again fully alert i say steve old buddy how's it going uh how do we kill this thing hey man you said Lady Durst sent you, right? Well, she probably wanted it to kill you then. <laughs> but look, man, I think you're real funny. I think you're a cool guy. And, um, cool. I, I haven't really seen you. You Are you new to the cult? Yeah, like, like <laughs> I, I, I don't know how this is all happening in six seconds. But uh, yeah, no, uh, like I said, we're, we're brand new. Uh, this, this, I, I'm sorry, we didn't read the, uh, the, the uh, orientation pamphlet. Because I like you and... Um, and I hate my dad. 
<laughs> and he looks over at, at his dad who's on the ground there. He leans down at the balcony and says, Look, man, all I can say is, like, you need to, like, look within yourself and you'll find the answers. You know what I mean, man? No! <laughs> like, look inside, man, okay? All right. And he, uh, you see him uh, turn back down to his dad and be like, Yeah, you okay, Pops? Uh, let's do another strength opposing grapple check to see if you get out on your turn now. Oh, shit. And it is still oh, oh. just holding on to you tight. And you still have, like, access to one of your arms, and it hasn't fully encompassed your full body, so you still have, like, access to some of your gear and stuff. You okay. you have one of your arms, and, again, a huge part of your body is still exposed. You could pop, reach into there and use your bonus action to, to down one of those, your one potion. All right, so as I'm reaching in, I, I look over my shoulder and I go, Delphini, a little help here! In my teeth, I just grab out the, the cork and spit it out and then just down this entire thing, you know, all while being, you know, uh, accosted by this large <laughs> sludge thing. Awesome. So let's, I think that's a 2d4 plus 4 or something. But go ahead and roll for that. And Cheek, you see... Your, your friend over here getting wailed on by this creature, downing a health potion. It is now your turn. Okay, I'm going to put the, the I'm gonna quickly fold up the scroll and put it into my bag and I'm going to run over and I'm going to chill touch on the blobby thing. <laughs> totally. Oh. And does that mean it has then, disadvantage? Okay. Yes, it does. It has disadvantage against it. You cast this chill touch and it does connect as it as you see this frosty ice encasing part of of the body so let's uh let's roll damage on that one please mm -hmm. and it now has disadvantage on attack rolls until the end of your next turn yes and since i'm last so is that specifically <laughs> against cheek or is that against everyone Against, against everyone. everyone. Oh, That's good. So great. Oh, thank God. <laughs> yes, uh, I yes, I'll just prepare an attack just in case. So I will stay on the dead bodies. Use chill touch, which is your action. So I don't think you'll actually like mm -hmm. prepare uh, an attack if that's what you mean. But you're you're there and ready in battle. Yeah, I'm space, like right? ready. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get mad. Let's get in a rage, shall we? Yeah. 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 Rage. Oh, rage. <laughs> yeah. We're going to actually roll two times here. One for your charm and one for the thunder wave that you cast immediately going into this room. Oh, good lord. Yeah, so roll a d20. If it's one or five, yeah, At it four. triggers. Let's roll another d20. Oh, boy. And so that one doesn't trigger. And then also, don't forget, you have Tides of Chaos which yes. gives you advantage on another one. Once you trigger Tides of Chaos for everyone watching at home, he has like a 50% chance to start triggering on this table, which yes. is nuts. Give me one more roll. This one doesn't work with this situation because we missed so many. Um, at this point, so you cast that charm and you have that conversation with him. And at the end of this conversation, these 10 thin red cords emerge from your fingers and as Steve went to turn away so they shoot out of your fingers almost like Spider-Man and they all attach to Steve as um, even just with a little bit of motion you've pushed him all the way to the edge of this balcony there whoa man well, I thought we were friends dude sorry, sorry <laughs> you, you know uh, <laughs> it happens from time to time I'm still learning <laughs> told you I was new to this uh, I just got mad uh, and seeing seeing her friend being devoured by this monster and feeling very frustrated that two of her party members are still far away from this fight, Delphine enters a rage. And when that happens, she's feeling yeah. very light on her feet and she starts to lift up a little bit. And Delphine is born aloft. She gains a flying speed that is equal to her walking speed for the rest of this rage. Oh. But Delphine doesn't know that. Delphine just sees herself lifting up in the air, and she is going to take her hammer and just slam it on top of this monster. Seven. 
you so you're not flying because you would have you would have to intentionally move with that direction but you immediately start lifting off the ground as you start panicking thinking that the cultists have directed their attention you wildly swing with your hammer uh, out of just reaction to this trying to get as close as you can to the monster but phew, it swings through the air and you miss unfortunately Okay, in that case, I would like to use the rest of my movement. How far away is Steve from me? So Steve is about 20 feet away from you. Okay, well, in that case, I, I want to try to catch him a little bit. So you float through the air with ease as you're slowly, and you're able to get to Steve. What would you like to do? I want to go ahead and try to grab him because I'd imagine I'm a bit bigger than he is. Yeah, totally. And just tell him, chill out, chill out, calm down. I've got you. Yeah, so you've got him. Dude, man, I don't even know what's going on. These strings here. Dude, I thought we were the ones going to do crazy stuff. What are you guys? <laughs> who are you? And so he's in a panic there as, as you've grabbed him. Clement. I'll take a peek right out of the, the cart with the bread and see all this stuff going on. Leave the crate a little closer to the creature. And I'll say, I don't seem like the first time you like the burn, so how about the second time? And I'll cast again. This little blind me a sacred flame. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Dex, right? Yeah, and you once again go to cast this sacred flame around him, and this time um, the eyes dart towards you, right? As they all look at you and just almost vacate the, a little bit of space, making a room for where that flames are, are reaching up. Still, most of their attention on Roland just totally encompassing him at this point. And Roland, you have been slowly getting more and more encased in this monster as uh, your arm around you um, gets, both of your arms now are, are starting to get uh, uncovered there. And you, um, you see that it's starting to try to suck you into the interior of this, of this disgusting creature here and it goes to try to pull you in, um, but but it fails as as you're still resisting with all the strength that you have, fighting to hold the ground that you have and you, and you resist. So you're still getting kind of pulled back over the railing towards, towards this creature. And let's say you're actually still up on this railing, getting pulled along it as the stone railing is scraping uh, part of your shoulder. Uh, like, so if uh, if it were to have pulled me into it, is there something that would have engulfed me completely? What's happening is this, this weird limb-like um, mound of flesh that has grabbed you is was starting to pull you back into the, in, the, the full blob of itself. So um, there's part of it kind of like opening up to the interior, but no like direct hole, nothing there. It just seemed to be trying to, trying to like suck you in almost like a gelatinous cube would do. All right, so uh, first of all, uh, did Steve also get pulled along with us? Yeah, so he is up on that balcony getting pulled with, with those strings. And just as you're scraping up against this railing down here, he's precariously up there as well. And let's say Delphini, that you're able to move along with him if you wanted to stay attached. Sure, I'll stay with him. Right, so so that's what I do. I say, I say let go, and then I, I wrap my, my one free arm uh, around those cords and I yank down. And I, and I say, Steve, brace yourself. Because I kind of like Steve and I don't, I don't want him to necessarily get hurt, but I try and pull him down so that he would fall onto the amorphous blob. Yeah, you can do that. And yeah, so he's already precariously leaning on this balcony. It takes the littlest pull as you pull him over and he falls right where you want. You hear the thud of a thoo as he hits this gooey, disgusting, sliming creature. And you start seeing some of the mouths on, on this thing just start like chewing on just little parts of him. Um, he's not getting like engulfed or anything like you are right now, but you just see this monster directs its parts of his attention towards it now as he what the hell man i god i told dad i wanted to be a potion seller <laughs> <laughs> Pull, pulling steve was that an action or a bonus action um that totally fine to make that a bonus action i, I almost was gonna even consider maybe even part of your movement as you're really just moving your body with that uh i i uh kind of twist myself around and 
I, uh, with my, my one free hand, uh, I, I kind of point it forward, dive into the monster, and uh, try try and use my hand to like create an opening. Yeah, totally. So mm. perfect. That is that is the one, the deepest hole that you do see. Nothing that it was creating on its own, but that acid one, which is kind of right on the top, which you're getting pulled into. You can easily see that. Um, we're gonna do this. You still have an action. So I will let you, if you wanted to try to cast something or a, yes. or attack, um, I'd let that aid this movement that you're doing. It's already right. trying to pull you in, so right. it's, it's going to be easy to try to lunge towards it. Can, All right. can I toss the potion that I have, the potion of enlarged size, to Roland? Oh, that's fun. So the answer would be, the, the true answer would be no. This sounds really <laughs> fun. So let's roll a d20 and okay. on a zero to 10, we let it happen. And on the rest, it fails. Oh, I got I a two. Oh. I did swap no, it at the last second. I, you that did was... swap oh, you, it. You swapped it at the... No, why would you do that at the end? <laughs> well, he went one so way excited. and then the other way and then the other way again, so. Yeah. <laughs> I was so excited for my so two. You reach out and you try to hand, hand this potion to him, but it just doesn't connect. And Roland, what are you what are you gonna do here? So you are already attached to this. It's pulling you in. So with the momentum, you can easily push your way into it even more. Uh, you can make your way to that that cut at its top. You're moving head first into this thing and casting yes. thunder wave. So let's see the roll. Great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll a con save with disadvantage. Yeah, I believe that fails. Oh, again. Disgusting creature here. You see Steve on top and Roland jumping forward at it. It pushes, the force of this pushes everyone up this ledge here. Yeah, and you just cast this whoosh, as a chunk of the flesh just shoots off and flies. And what everyone else sees is the this mass of a, of a creature start have, having its flesh move over where Roland is. And you just see now his feet sticking out of this thing. <laughs> All right, so uh, I think that's that's everything I can do. <laughs> Go ahead, team. I say through both. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what appears, so he dives head first, casts Thunder Wave, and this whole heaping mass with two bodies on it pushes forward onto the altar as part of the back of this stone-like chair it starts crumbling under the massive weight of that force. And you see on the side where the crumbled wall is where Rusty entered, you just see a poof of smoke poof, as this confused brown bear appears, <laughs> um, just growling. <laughs> and uh, it's just looking around the room uh, in a panicked way. Oh, cheek, oh, no. talk to Poor it, bear. talk to it. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, well, I guess I guess it is my turn. So um, I, I am going to cast Animal Friendship. Yes. Yeah, so you see this bear look around in confusion as it makes its eyes meet with you, Cheek, and you cast this this druidic spell as you see these almost green leaf-like leaf -like, uh, energy beams move towards it, and it hits it in the face, and it shakes its head and has a sense of focus on it as it's looking directly at you, Cheek, for, for directions. Uh, and I point directly at the mass, and I say, Go, Yogi, go! <laughs> <laughs> Yogi, <I love> it. <laughs> and, and the bear um yes go is going to actually have its own turn right after yours so what would you like to do first hmm, okay i will move myself and i you know what i will move myself here so that oh hmm, i guess if i'm entering its combat space it gets an attack of opportunity uh, actually, yeah. only when you're leaving, it's it's space. So oh, you can actually go okay. right up to it. Okay, then I will set myself there. Yeah. So that I'm not leaving its space. So this brown bear leaps down from the balcony and runs up those stairs, gets up to this creature, and, and with you know an intense focus with the command that you've given it, slashes out with its claw, and you just see these large, Ooh. maybe you know four or five inch long claws slice as it slices in to this creature and 
Nice. And it deals 10 slashing damage as you just see. And it slices through actually two other eyes that just pop right out. Yes. And I will give Yogi a little, like, scritch. At this point, Poggers pops out of your bag of holding and looks out. Uh, not only <laughs> he sees the bear and gets just completely shocked, turns to the right a little bit more, <laughs> sees this monster, and Lou, you just see his eyes widen up as he pops right back into the bag of holding. And we are at Delphini. <laughs> All right, Jordan. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and using my newfound flying abilities, I'm going to fly over this water and back to the seven here. Yeah. And I'm gonna get out my hand axe, and using the hand axe, I want to cut a hole big enough for um, Roland to possibly get out. Uh, and you go to swing. The movement of your of your flight once again. You're still adjusting to it, and you get over there, and you you slash, and you do actually make contact with the monster, but just the slightest graze as you just see a slice through it, um, not dealing enough damage to, to wound this creature. In that case, I'm just gonna take a step back get some distance between the two of us. That's about all I can do this turn. Yeah, that's me. So, um, all right, um, <laughs> let go of it, you. And I'll say, um, yes, I keep climbing you. And I'll cast Scorching Ray at the huge blob monster. Awesome. Yeah, on the first, first one. Ray shoots out and connects with the, the creature. As you see, fire shoot out. <laughs> Four. You see the fire and go right into one of the mouths of this creature as it, as it fire just Ooh. shoots out. And the second, second ray shoots, yeah. uh, oh. overshoots the monster and hits the water behind us. You see the singe of into the air. Hey, what's where you're throwing that? I have a third one of 17. And that last one connects back with the target. Uh, you think Cheek like, oh yeah, I gave him a little instruction there and he got back on target. And you see it connect right again there with a <laughs> fire shoot up as this creature once again gives a uh, just a horrid screech out of its many mouths. Yeah, so all of you are just surrounding this creature as you see just now the feet of Roland sticking out of it. And with the movement of that, um, you are getting inside the interiors here Roland. His turn. He's going to hold you in even further. Oops. You now, everyone, you lose sight of Roland's feet as he gets fully yeah. encompassed into this creature. Steve, meanwhile, with the force of this push, uh, has tumbled off onto the altar uh, as he's laying there. What happens while you're in there, Roland, is you see all this just this disgusting ligaments and intestines and body parts in there, and they start to constrict on you, pulling tighter and tighter, and you take three um, bludgeoning damage from this just uh, disgusting wrap, uh, bits that are wrapping all around. He's pulling Roland in, and he turns over to Clement as you now see another limb-like... Oh, and... Oh, oh. <laughs> and he goes to hit you, Clement, and and with your shield, it just hits that as you actually push off the creature. you seeing what happened to your comrade Roland just gets sucked in. Uh, you're not about to let that happen to you, too. And we are now with Roland. So what happened in here is you have are now fully encased inside this disgusting creature. Maybe digest or eat you in some way. And as you get further in, you start to see, um, you see a a crying baby inside there in just the smallest intact cavity. This baby looks like it's um, just a couple months old. It's fair to say that potentially that baby would be less than 10 pounds. Uh, so with this... Um... <laughs> yes, the baby would fit in a two by four foot space <laughs> if that's what you're asking. <laughs> And Roland, at this point, you're thinking about what to do next, and you start to hear your your pocket once again vibrates, and you hear, God, Roland, what the hell was that? I, there's a baby, or perhaps you can deal a devious blow to this creature from the inside. I'm trying to figure out what I can do amidst this cacophony of noise and constriction that is happening around me. And you start hearing uh, arguments between the voices, kill the baby, no, no, free the baby. No, what if you cut the baby? Perhaps there's some sort of dark magic here. 
I use my meta magic of subtle spell to use one sorcery point for that. I use these daggers. I, I have one in each hand and I start cutting my way out ever so slowly. And, and I try to create a cavity with which I can move the baby out of this gelatinous blob through the cavity that I make. You pull these two daggers out of your pockets and you start cutting all the ligaments that you can see. As you cut the last one, um, all the eyes of this creature turn inward. Everyone else, you see its mouth scream and its eyes go um, white as they've turned into the interior. Uh, Roland, at this point, you see all of these eyes staring at you as you are in the inside of this creature giving this guttural screech out. And what happens is it, it screams and you start to see um, this massive pile of flesh to everyone else, it begins to sizzle as you see the steam dry, um, exuding from it and drying up as if the magical energies that were holding it together have begun to fade. As all the mouths are screaming here, um, the creature lunge, um, moves um, with like demonic speed out of, out of pain as it screeches forward. Uh, of course, Roland is inside of it and it crashes into a wall, knocking out one of these large columns of an, of, along each of the walls, holding up the balcony and, and, and extending up to the ceiling of this fully um, stone encased room. And you see this column crush, crack as it falls and starts to collapse this balcony up here. The cultists are just losing their mind as all of them are retreating into the dark doorways. And now suddenly the stone ceiling starts to give way as, as it starts uh, collapsing. The voices enter your head around. Oh, this is looking really bad. How should we get out of here? Oh, what about the hole that Rusty blew open? Perhaps he'll be of use after all. I clutch the baby with me. And I say, uh, I say, this is where we get out. Thank God, Rusty came here. And I just, I just tell everybody to run to that exit and and do what we can to to get out of here. Understanding that jumping over a barrier could be uh, a cause for shaken baby syndrome, um, <laughs> I, I I run I run down and the... over and try and do this in the most responsible way possible. <laughs> all group up there's still um a brown bear that's following after you cheek um, yogi come come with hey, us hey, yogi. get to this hole and as you as you get to it you see um what looks like uh at least to a small tunnel that was dug out of the earth here and you're guided by the faint moonlight at the end of it you see the stone large stonework just collapsing in in the room behind you on the way out you spot a rusty shovel and a burlap sack with e easily one of you sees that it has a single bomb in it. I look back over my shoulder and I say, Sorry, Steve! Where is Steve? And the last you saw of him, he was sitting, laying down on the altar. Uh, can I go back for him? Tim on you. You can go back if you'd like. Cheek, I don't know about this. We have Yogi, we have Poggers, and now we have this baby. We don't know if we're friends with it. Okay, okay, then, uh, then, sorry, Steve. I just rolled um, here, you made a good choice as you just see a huge piece of stone smash right at where the tunnel entrance is, blocking most of it. You're back in the oak forest. I grabbed the burlap sack. Did anyone grab the shovel? I've got a baby in my hands, I can't grab anything. <laughs> but wait, Roland, it has what? to be a haiku in Yogi's honor. A haiku in <laughs> Yogi's honor? <laughs> <laughs> So still sitting there next to the tree, cradled with the baby in my arms, <clears throat> I look up to my team and then I look straight, I, I just look Yogi straight in the eyes and I say, Yogi saved our ass. Never let this bear die, team. All hail Yogi Bear. <laughs> <laughs> and you just hear this roar of applause come out of nowhere as voices actually go and you had Oh, that was so cool, Roland. Great job out wow. there. You really showed that monster. Um, well, what do you think? What do you think we should do here now? I think this house is cursed. Well, perhaps a blessing could do it some good. Right. 
and and uh, grasping my head with one arm as I still keep the, the baby cradled with my right. Uh, I just kind of put myself uh, away from the situation and regress a little bit. And then as I come to, I, uh, I look at Clement and I say, Clement, that house is terrible. We've done our bit. We have saved those who were righteous. And now it is your turn to save the rest of the world from ever falling upon this monstrosity again. Is there anything that you can do to bless this house or put it out of its misery and keep this from happening to anybody ever again? Well, uh, Rowan, that is definitely something that um, I can do, but um, the, the blessing of Kosov is just purification by flame, so um, I can do that, sure. And I'll um, uh, I'll walk a bit towards the house, and um, is the house, uh, does it have any wooden beams, wooden things that are just a little closer? Oh yeah, there's the house is made out of mostly wood. All right, so what I would do is I would say, Gariyashkiruki, and I will cast flame burning ants at it. Hmm. And tell me a little bit of what that looks like and how it how it affects or how it um, I'll, goes on. To I'll that. focus. I'll focus on the hand and the the scars start burning, and then I'll just kind of pull threads from them and just yeah. f- the flame starts starts heading towards the house. Yeah. And you see these holy flames shoot out of Clement and make their way up from the foundations of the house, cascading upwards. And you just see it enveloped in this reddish orange glow as you still see parts of the of the ground near you crush in under just destroying this entire dungeon that you've made your way through. Um, even as that starts to crush its way through the dungeon, you even see parts of the house start to collapse in on itself, a few beams breaking here and there, and, and this uh, holy light just lighting it up. As you do this, the baby in Roland's arms begins to glow the same color that it glowed for Rosethorn and Mar- and Squiggles uh, earlier. <laughs> and you see this baby, its eyes have been closed, it, those start, it stopped crying. Um, mm. Its eyes open just ever so slightly as it looks at all of you, um, and you just see it fade away. And as it's fading away, oh, I lean down and I give it a tender kiss on the forehead as then my face just kind of folds oh. through where the baby used to be at one point. Hmm. I'll say, um, this house has been purged. The unclean has been purified. Thank you, Clement. That was terrible, and Delphine takes a seat on the ground. <laughs> Can I have my poncho back, please? And You've got baby goo all over it now. Clement, could you no. give me actually a damage roll for Sacred Flame? Sure. Oh, uh, I'm gonna take burning hands. Right. Oh, did you cast Burning Hands? My, my, yeah. my mistake. That's nine for Burning Hands. Yeah, and Clement, what gets your attention is you start to see these clawed, um, and you're not sure what creature they belong to, but you do see them heading off. They were on part of the path going into the forest in a direction you have not yet been. Roland, do you have any experience with these sort of tracks? Uh, you know, I I might be able to help just a little bit, and uh, so I go over, I, I put Polgas down. Uh, with that, I follow Clement uh, down to the road and take a look at these. Yeah, give me a nature check. Oh, sorry, I still have advantage on. And we'll always take that first one, so the 19. And you stoop down, and you recognize, especially for your time fighting in the the war for Unther, uh, you see these as uh, dragonborn footprints. Ooh. Ah, clawed ah, toes. Mm. There he is. There he is. 
There's Dofel. I would say following him probably is most urgent. So, you know, to have him have an eight-hour head start on us, it's just we're never going to catch him, right? Right. So uh, I would rather follow him. Maybe we can find a town or something where he tries to hide. Or Roland, while you were down there, you also saw along some of the leaves and tree trunks and just right by the where, where these footprints are you see drops and trails of blood uh cheek cheek would you would you be able to maybe between the three of you can you determine if they recognize this blood from maybe a creature that would be in this forest or if it's something foreign to them yes i can ask them okay. uh so i turn to first to yogi and i say nice to meet you yogi i'm sorry that you had to be sort of Teleported here, but welcome to our party. It is nice to meet you too, little one. Can you go with my friends and smell some blood? It seems there's blood from two creatures. Hmm, what two creatures? And those two creatures are... And he looks down and actually eats a, a few more leaves. It seems a dragonborn dragon and a big dog. So Cheek looks at uh, Poggers and says, Okay, what's your name? Who are you? I will be the one asking questions here. Who well, you are don't ask. You? Oh, well, I'm Cheek of Peeth, but please just call me Cheek. Oh, nice now, please to meet tell me. Oh, nice to meet you too, but I don't know your name, so please tell me who you are. Well, We're I running out of time for this. Time. Once I feel comfortable with you, okay, you have um... been taking good care of my body. And he, <laughs> you know, looks down at his paws. Um, are you are you going to hurt us? Do you think I'll hurt you? Um, not really. You're a sm very small pug. I could destroy your world in a second. Achoo! And he sneezes again, and and uh, is back and this dog form, uh, you know, just back dopey-eyed again. I'll give him a little scritch on his ears and say, good job, Poggers. And you do that, Yogi is staring and he can actually <laughs> understand most of this conversation. Um, and what the hell is that thing? You look at Yogi, all of you, and you see his left back paw start to disappear. And oh, he looks no, at his no. paw. Oh no. God, you. Oh gosh, you have to help me. How, and you how, see how his can other I help you? Back paw start to disappear as well, as as likely the, the, the un. You know, the magics that summoned him are taking him back. Help uh, me, I don't want to die. Oh, um, and with that, he's sucked back into the ether from which he came. Well, someone might just tell you in a second because Clement mm. scratches his head, just confused at this. You you still have some bread in your hand as you just kind of munch that to get security from like what you know food. And Roland, you you piece this together. You've you've seen crazier things happen with your magic. From with this powerful magic that often comes, it's it's taken just as soon. Um, you've 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 given I wouldn't say birth. You've you've summoned <laughs> weird creatures into this world. Um, and you've seen this happen before. Can I say, you know, technically, uh, maybe, maybe I did give birth with that last <laughs> fight, but, um, to a that's, that's besides the point. No, 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 to the baby. Anyway, we're not having this conversation. This is all in my head. And so, <laughs> Maki in chat says, unbearable. I love it. A couple of Excellent bear puns. Yeah, a, a couple of, uh, very Monokuma esque bear puns. You continue through the thick forest. Once again, this whole land that you've been in is still lightly shrouded in, in this mist. And the area you approach start to become too covered in leaves and twigs as you lose sight of, of the footprints and the blood trails as well. And it just starts getting covered in what probably is fresh leaves all around you. Um, at this moment, all of you see a few lights flickering in the distance. And as you draw closer, you can see there's a clearing up ahead next to a river that widens to form a small lake. And there are five metal tent-like structures 
that stand at the center of this clearing. Time-wise, you would say you've been walking through here for just another 15, 20 minutes, and you get a better look at these metal structures, and there you see red pulsing magical energies coming off of them. Uh, there's bright light shining from inside the structures, and you see about half a dozen people walking around. Most of them are of a darker skin with black hair, wearing pretty colorful, elegant clothing. Um, but it looks like there's even people from several races amongst this group. The structures here have these beautiful multi-layered roofs that curve out almost like you would see uh, in Japanese architecture in our world. And there's also this small enclosed corral that has these eight metal horses that similarly pulse with this red energy. Oh. I, I look at the team and I say, I think, I think we may have come across some traveling bods. Bods? We, bods. B-A-R-D-S, bods. Yes, we should at least ask them about anybody else coming through there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. They have food, they have probably something, maybe place to rest. That would be great. Roll yes. in your pocket shakes as, oh, I'm glad we're out of that stinking house. <laughs> oh, this camp looks very inviting, but can we trust them? And the voices argue amongst themselves of whether or not, you know, they can just walk into this camp. Ah, perhaps stealth would be the best way to do it. What do you think, Roland? And um, can can Delphini do a perception check? Are these guys like armed walking around the camp, or do they seem relatively relaxed? Yeah, give me a, a closer look. All right, fourteen. Yeah, and you're able to peer in, and you just see people. It looks like they're they're rotating around. Your best guess would be that they're on some sort of watch over the night. Delphini, you're looking for weapons in particular. You do see the ones walking around the, somewhat around the kind of perimeters of some of the tents. Um, they do seem to have like a sword on the side or, or an ax on the side. We need to make sure that we don't come off as aggressive. I mean, obviously it's really early. We, we don't want to scare them. We are going to spread out equidistant, roughly, uh, uh, roughly equidistant from each other. Cheek, as you can run far, I'm going to have mm. you take the far left. Delphine, okay. I'm going to have you take the far right. Uh, Clement and I, we will spread out uh, kind of in the middle of you two, and we will kind of come at this at four quadrants. Stay outside of the encampment and try and stay out of sight, but we need mm. to see what these people are up to before we actually engage them. Make eye contact with Clement and give him a little fist bump and start to head off to the right. I'll say, sure, uh, stealth is my uh, specialty, and I'll <laughs> fist bump with the uh, fist bump with uh, Delphine, and uh, I'll I'll head out too. And as as he walks away, uh, I try and like fist bump him too, but he hasn't noticed me, and so <laughs> he just kind of leave, leaves me hanging a little bit. Uh, and um, I, I, I I go to headbutt his fist, and and I I fist bump <laughs> I fist bump just very lightly on the forehead. And you play so. it off as like, oh, yeah, I was waiting for Cheek the whole time, not to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think to myself, yeah. Can everyone give me a stealth check, please? As you get closer and closer to this encampment. I can try. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Oh. Ooh. 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 Did we get oh, a wow. fat 20 in the chat? <laughs> did we get one? Is, yeah, did we you? did. Where? 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 Oh, it's Wait. a minus one. You're right. Yeah. Fat 20 in the yeah. chat, everybody. Minus one makes it a 19, but that is still legitimate. Oh. So uh, so I, I look at them and I say, it seems that they are armed for defense, but uh, they don't appear to be, uh, they don't appear to be aggressive or barbaric in nature. They appear to be friendly. Uh, I'd ask that uh, each of you sheathe your weapons. We approach the camp in a visible way making ourselves known and appearing as unthreatening as possible. I don't think Cheek should go first. She's the least but, scary looking. And I, and I go, who, who could be angry at that man? And I kind of pat his belly just a little bit. <laughs> hey, oh, hey, don't touch the jiggly parts. <laughs> <laughs> and as you guys are almost messing around, um, you, Clement takes a step backwards and you find that you've kicked back into 
a tin can that was on the ground, likely some some trash from the the camp over here, and it makes this tick noise that echoes through the quietness of the of the forest, and and immediately you see three of the people rotating uh, in that side of the camp look your way and begin walking that way. There's the one that was the closest. Um, can actually see a few of you as as if you were talking behind the trees. If some of you are still sticking out, and they see you, and one's walking over your way. This woman approaches you with dark skin, jet black hair, pulls out a a sword, unsheathing it, and says, "Who are you? Do you speak common?" And well, she I'm didn't seem to maybe catch all the words that you had had said on on the way over. I do speak common. My name is Clement. Clement Bellum is the name. Uh, these are my friends. And she looks right at you and says, we, we don't often get visitors at four in the morning. And she is pointing her sword now at you and asks your full group as she rotates the sword around, who do you serve? And we're going to end the session there. No! 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 <laughs> no! Why is it just, just okay? All right, so we just make this a two-parter and just like continue it for another three hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow, Thank I was you. about to have Delphini like roll for charisma because she's about to fall in love with this girl. She's adorable. <laughs> <Right. powerful. laughs> yeah, you get a better look at their clothing and and their whole style, and they are just like this group of of just well dressed. Like gorgeous people, um, ah. and but you've got there's this sword to your throat right now. I um, I, I know my first line of the next session. I'm so excited <laughs> for it. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to so say it right now? Single. Uh, can, can I? Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Do it. All right. And we'll end so, on that. So I say, Madam, we serve the music. And with, with that, uh, <laughs> as you do that, the last thing that happens is she very quickly with her left hand, her open left hand, pulls out a pan flute and puts it in her mouth and gives it a little blow. And you hear like, yeah, yeah, and this like little jingle voice out of her throat. And we'll continue that next time. Wow. Best ending <laughs> so far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking around. Uh, we're going to try to continue keeping these sessions at around the three or, or a little over mark. So love to see everyone who, stick, who stuck around the whole time. Uh, I hope everyone's having fun. We're going to keep continuing this every Sunday, same place, same time. And the story is going to just get better and better. <laughs>